Welcome to Thick Town, everyone. Population, this guy. This NVIDIA GeForce RTX 3090 Ti, specifically MSI's Supreme X version of the card, which launches today with mixed anticipation, depending on whether or not you've got the cash on hand to afford one. This one MSRPs for $2,200, which is what an entire high-end PC went for in the before times, and the Founders Edition of the 3090 Ti starts at two grand. If that dollar amount and this GPU's absolutely colossal, 3.5, uh, I'm just I'm just gonna call it a four slot cooler, isn't enough to turn you away in shock and disgust, then by all means continue watching. I've got benchmarks aplenty to share with you all. This is my launch review of the MSI Supreme X version of NVIDIA's new fastest GPU ever, the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti. Excellent! The Thermaltake Tower 100 is back in a variety of colors. This unique and versatile mini ITX chassis has three tempered glass panels for an expansive view of your epic build. The vertical orientation means support for big three slot graphics cards and tall air coolers. And every side and top panel is removable, which makes building or accessing the inset magnetic dust filters way easier. This case performed well in my testing, even with the high end 5900X and RTX 3080 system. It has full size ATX power supply support, and it's now available in turquoise, metallic gold, and racing green. Click the sponsor link in the description for more. All right, so let's start with a TLDW summary for the impatient folks out there. Is the GeForce RTX 3090 Ti the fastest gaming GPU now? Yes, it won every benchmark test I ran, except maybe a couple outliers. Is this GPU ridiculously power hungry? Yes, my test bed peaked at over 700 watts of power draw during testing with no overclocking to speak of. And while the Founders Edition 3090 Ti has a 450 watt TBP or total board power, this manufacturer overclocked Supreme X bumps that up to 480 watts. NVIDIA recommends an 850 watt power supply at minimum for this graphics card and the rest of your system. And it was a bit telling to me that MSI quite literally shipped me a 1000 watt power supply as a bonus add-on to this card just to make sure it would get enough power. Speaking of power, this card does have that new 12VH power connector, the one that Intel recently finalized along with the ATX 3.0 spec, as well as the 3-8 pin PCI Express graphics to single 12 pin adapter that can provide up to 450 watts of juice, which when added to the 75 watts of power available through the PCI Express slot, which gives the card 525 total watts to work with. So the 480 watts total board power rating is still within those limits. New power supplies with the official 12VH power connector that adds four data pins will be able to supply the GPU with up to 600 watts, just FYI. I used the 1600 watt Corsair AX1600i PSU for my testing, which worked just fine, but do note that the three-way adapter on the packaging asks that you do not use daisy chain PCI Express power connectors. One cable per plug, please. So double check your power supply if you're thinking of upgrading to the 3090 Ti. Most 850 watt units should have these cables available, no problem. The last big question leading up to this launch was about the new GDDR6X memory. While the 3090 Ti still has 24 gigabytes of VRAM, which is really nice for mixed use content creation, by the way, it is both faster 20 one gigabit per second GDDR6 X VRAM, and they're now using two gigabyte modules, meaning they need half of the chips on the board. So no more VRAM on the back of the PCB this time. GDDR6 X memory temperatures were very hot with the 3090 Founders Edition in particular. And while I can't speak to the Founders Edition 3090 Ti, I can confirm that my MSI Supreme X VRAM only hit 82C max on the memory junction, a significant drop from the 98C temperature that my unmodded 3090 Founders Edition gets up to. With those questions answered, let's get into the thicker part of my video, just to keep with today's theme. I made timestamps so you can jump ahead for the benchmark numbers, but I'm gonna quickly go over the MSI Supreme X, Su Supreme, Supreme? RTX 3090 Ti and my testing setup. And first, let's just gaze in awe at the gargantuan size of this thing. An absolute unit in every sense of the word. It's a 3.5 slot card, so not quite four slots, but definitely too big for three. And it measures over 13 inches long, about 13.2 inches or 335 millimeters from the bracket by my measurements. It has triple Torx 4.0 fans to push air across the aluminum fin stacks beneath the shroud. And there's a copper base plate and heat pipe array in there for the GPU, memory, and VRMs. 
Round things out with an aluminum backplate with RGB elements that continue across the shroud, as well as some edge lighting. And you have an impressive looking card that also performs quite well in my testing, as we shall see. Oh, and there is a dual BIOS switch right here. Uh, it's, got a, it's got a silent and an OCV BIOS by default, and since it shipped to me in the silent mode, that's how I tested it. And just one more thing about the Supreme X, if GPU sag is a concern with such a beefy cooler on this card, do note that they include one of their nice GPU supports in the box, and I've used one of these before and it works quite well. So that should prevent your card from experiencing any unsightly droopage. Oh, and you get a mouse pad too. Now the GPU itself is the fully enabled variant of the Ampere GA102. The GA102-350-A1 to be specific, built with Samsung's eight nanometer lithography and sporting 10,752 CUDA cores, 256 more than the 3090 non-TI. The 3090 Ti also has 84 SM units and ships with 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X VRAM with a data rate of 21 gigabits per second, up from the 19.5 gigabits per second VRAM in the 3090 non-TI. Relevant stats for all the cards tested today are here if you want to pause to compare them. And do note that I'm showing launch MSRPs, which are likely not the same as street prices right now, despite some recent improvements in the market. And the base and boost clocks here are the base values from NVIDIA and do not reflect the out-of-box manufacturer overclocks. Moving on to my test setup. All tests were run on this test bed right here with an MSI X570 Meg Ace motherboard and a Ryzen 9 5900X 12 core CPU running with auto OC and PBO enabled, cooled by a Corsair H150 Elite LCD 360 millimeter all in one liquid CPU cooler. Memory is a 32 gigabyte G Skill Trident Z Neo DDR4 3600 cast latency 16 kit, meaning the RAM and the Infinity Fabric are both running at 1800 megahertz. And for power, we have that Corsair AX 1600i 1600 watt ATX power supply that's overkill even for this GPU. Tests were run on the latest version of Windows 10, and here are stats for the rest of the system if you want to take a closer look. Let's move on to performance though, and here are the actual clock speeds I was seeing out of the cards while in use. Note that the listed base and boost clocks for modern GPUs can often be ignored as real world measurements almost always show them running at higher frequencies. Frequency will also change based on temperature and other variables, so while the 3090 Ti peaked at 2070 megahertz and averaged about 2010 megahertz after a long test run, it was also running at about 2040 to 2055 megahertz when below 70 C and about 2025 megahertz when between 70 and 74 C. Frequencies might go up if ambient temperatures go down or frequencies might go down if the card is running warmer in an enclosed chassis with limited airflow or if the ambient temperature goes up as well. Let's dive into some benchmark numbers next. 3DMark Time Spy Extreme is a synthetic DirectX 12 benchmark from 3DMark, and here the 3090 Ti's graphics score was about 10% faster than the 3090 non-Ti. This also puts it about 23% ahead of AMD's top GPU, the RX 6900 XT, which extends the 10% lead that the regular 3090 used to have over AMD in this test. 3DMark Port Royal is my other synthetic benchmark from 3DMark. It's a ray tracing focused test, and it's already been established that AMD still has some catch up to do in this area. The 3090 Ti's score of 14,474 is about 8.5% of the 3090 here, but it's more than 45% ahead of the 6900 XT. Ray tracing has finally gained some traction in the industry and is becoming more common in new games, but we'll likely have to wait for next gen Radeon GPUs before AMD catches up here. Moving on to real world games, Shadow of the Tomb Raider is also a DirectX 12 title, and at 1080, the 3090 Ti scores another win over the 3090 by just shy of 16%. CPU limitations are a factor at 1080 as GPU usage drops below 80%, which is why the scores are grouped up a bit more and most results are within 5% or so of the 3090. Just like with 1080, at 1440p the Radeon cards still have strong showings versus their Nvidia counterparts. Previously the 3090 couldn't quite take the lead here, but the 3090 Ti hitting 205 average FPS puts it 15.3% ahead of the 3090 and 20-40 to 40 frames ahead of the Radeon 6000 series cards as well. At 4K the Nvidia battle is a bit closer, with the 3090 Ti coming in 10% faster versus the 3090 and 13.7% faster than the RX 6900 XT. Next we return to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, one of the newer additions to my benchmark suite, a beautiful DirectX 11 game that lets you fly anywhere in the world, with a focus on detail and draw distance, which means relatively low frame rates. The 3090 Ti performed well at all resolutions, starting at 1080, where it hit 71.4 FPS, even though we are most definitely CPU limited here, with GPU usage at 66 
6%. At 1440p, the 3090 Ti's frame rate actually goes up versus 1080, hitting 71.9 FPS, but again, GPU usage is around 80%, so the CPU is where our bottleneck still lies. That said, the 3090 Ti outperformed the 3090 by 34%, and the 6900 XT by almost 60% in this test. At 4K, GPU usage is finally close to 100%, so here we're looking at a more direct comparison between GPU performance with CPU factors minimized. At 57.2 FPS, the 3090 Ti still has a 41% lead over the 3090 though, and a 62% lead over the 6900 XT. Next up is Resident Evil Village, another DirectX 12 game, and my benchmark run begins with the first descent down into the village itself. Radeon GPUs have all performed well with this game in my experience. Even at 1080, the 3090 non-TI was behind Team Red, but the 3090 Ti did what Nvidia wanted it to do here and retook the crown by hitting 295 FPS, a 45% gain over the 3090, a 20% gain over the 3080 Ti, and about a 9.5% lead over the 6800 and 6900 XTs. At 14 1440p, the RTX 3090 Ti is 19% ahead of the 3090, hitting 228 average frames per second, which also allowed it to take less than a 1% lead over the 6900 XT. And at 4K, the 3090 Ti completes its sweep of this category, again toppling the 6900 XT, which was the former champ. 130.7 FPS is about 13% faster than the 3090, and 7% faster than the 6900 XT. Continuing on to Dirt 5, a racing game which is fun. Running the ultra high preset with resolution scaling turned off, and at 1080 the cards all fall in line as expected, with the 3090 Ti topping 200 FPS and beating out the 3090 by 15%, while also being 24% faster than the 6900 XT. At the higher 1440 resolution, the results are similar again, albeit with lower FPS values. 166 FPS for the 3090 Ti was 15% faster than the 3090 again, and about 25% above the 6900 XT. And at 4K, the 3090 Ti is 15% faster than the 3090 yet again. Impressive linear scaling between resolutions with Dirt 5 here, although the 6900 XT dropped back a bit more at this highest resolution, with the 3090 Ti capping a 30% lead. Cyberpunk 2077 is running with the Ultra Graphics preset, and at 1080p, the 3090 Ti only manages to outperform the 3090 non-Ti by 5.5%, and GPU usage was around 98% at all resolutions, so we're not seeing much CPU bottlenecking. This was also one of the rare cases that showed the 6 6900 XT outperforming Nvidia's latest chip, hitting 134.7 FPS for a 3% lead. At 1440 though, the lead disappears and we have roughly the same performance compared to the 6900 XT. 3090 Ti does have a 0.7% lead, which is negligible, although it still beat the 3090 non-Ti by 4%. And at 4K, where even the 3080 Ti and 3090 take a lead over the 6900 XT, the 3090 Ti hit 48.6 FPS, 8% above the 6900 XT, and just 0.5% better than the 3090. Doom Eternal is my only Vulcan title known for its fast-paced gameplay and tastefully depicted portrayal of demonic violence and gore. At 1080, the game engine can hit extremely high frame rates, and Team Radeon takes a second win, with the 6900 XT pushing 452 FPS, which is about 4% above the 3090 Ti's 435 FPS. At 1440, the 3090 Ti comes roaring back, at least enough to hit 360 FPS and a 6% lead over the 6900 XT, while staying 11% ahead of the OG 3090. And at 4K, the 3090 Ti cracked 200 FPS for the first time in my experience at this resolution, managing a 9.5% win over the 3090 and a 19.5% victory over the 6900 XT. God of War is another new benchmark I'm running. It's a new game on PC at least, and a port that has received a lot of praise. Starting with 1080, the 3090 Ti hits 137.9 FPS, which was the best of the bunch, although it is only a 3% improvement over the 3090. The Nvidia cards all performed well in this game and were generally above the frame rate output of the Radeon cards. At 1440p, the 3090 Ti's frame rate was 119.1, which outperformed the 3090 by 3.4% and the 6900 XT by about 14%. And at 4K, we hit 85.7 FPS with the 3090 Ti and still had an 8% lead over the 3090, as well as a 32% lead over the 6900 XT. 
Infinity. Note that God of War features DLSS and FSR support, so higher frame rates could be achieved by using those features with just a small amount of trade-off in image quality. And finally we have Far Cry 6, where yet again I noted some CPU limitations at 1080 as well as 1440. GPU utilization was at 75% at 1080, so there was less disparity between the results and the 3090 Ti came away with just over a 3% lead on the 3090 and was just over 5% ahead of the 6900 XT. At 1440, GPU utilization was up to 88%, so better than 1080, but still not in the high 90s like we'd prefer. At 125 FPS, the 3090 Ti was 4.2% faster than the 3090, but it actually lost by just over 2%, but still a third loss to the 6900 XT, which got up to 128.3. And finally, at 4K, we're no longer CPU bound, and the 3090 Ti goes up to 88.5 FPS, 5.6% faster than the 3090 non Ti, and a 7.3% improvement over the 6900 XT. So there are my gaming comparisons, but raw performance is only one part of the story. Let's take a look at temperatures and power draw next. Here are the peak overall and hotspot temperatures recorded for each card across all tests. The max temp for the 3090 Ti was 80.6 C, with a hotspot temp of 89.7. While those temperatures are high, they're actually pretty middle of the road when compared to the other cards in this roundup, and even a few degrees cooler than some of the cards with lower performance, like the 3070 Ti, 3080 Ti, or 6800 XT, which were all tested with either the reference model cooler or the Founders Edition. I would have to give credit to MSI's Supreme X cooler design for now, but it's hard to say for sure since this is the first and only 3090 Ti board partner design that I've tried out. And one more reminder that the GPU memory junction temperature for the GDDR6X is much improved now, hitting just 82 degrees Celsius on the 3090 Ti versus 98C on the Founders Edition 3090. Here are my power draw numbers, and apart from the price, this is the other major point of criticism for the 3090 Ti. 700 one watts max total system power draw, or 130 watts higher peak and about 100 watts higher average power draw than the 3090 or the 3080 Ti. You might also note here that the Radeon cards draw less power overall across the board, which is to be expected since they have lower board power ratings versus the Nvidia cards. And here is my summary, my overall numbers evenly weighted by game using the RTX 3090 non-Ti as the 100% baseline. Please remember that some of the tests at 1080 and 1440 were CPU limited, which typically results in more of a performance difference at 1440 and 4K. Not quite the case here though. To sum up, the RTX 3090 Ti outperformed the 3090 by 12.9% at 4K, 13.3% at 1440, and 16.5% at 1080p in my testing. And while the RX 6900 XT and the RTX 3090 used to be just about neck and neck, the 3090 Ti now extends an 11 to 12% lead over Team Red's best at 1080 or 1440, or about an 18% advantage at 4K. So if it wasn't obvious in the intro, I am of two minds about this launch from NVIDIA. On the one hand, I always appreciate progress, more performance, and more options options in the GPU market for gamers. Despite its overall chonkiness and girth, MSI has done an admirable job with the design of the Supreme X version of the 3090 Ti, and if you can fit it in your case, you'll likely be impressed with the low noise, both from the fans and minimal coil whine, and the fact that it can keep both the full-size GA102 GPU and the faster and denser 2 gb 21 gigabits per second GDDR6X memory modules well away from the thermal meltdown point. Then again though, it's a $2,000 card, or $2,200 in the case of this one, which is still a lot of money, even if you haven't been psychologically conditioned to accept high GPU prices over the past year or two. This is not a bang for the buck card. It's a Halo product meant to reestablish Nvidia's dominance and bump the 6900 XT further down the charts and it is not priced competitively. A $500 or 33% price bump over the 3090's $1,500 MSRP, which was already high, does not provide added value when the actual performance improvement is in the 10 to 15% range with most titles. But hopefully now, you guys have a better idea of how this card stacks up, and with GPU market prices returning somewhat back to normal, maybe they'll even be available today at list pricing rather than immediately selling out so they can be resold by scalpers for three or four grand. We can only hope. That's all for this video though, guys. Closing reminder to check out my store at paulshardware.net for merch, shirts, pipe glasses, and other thumbscrew related items. And of course, like this video if you enjoyed it, subscribe to my channel if you really enjoyed it. Thanks as always for watching, and we'll see you all in the next video.